Hi, everybody. Um, sorry, no guitar playing today. Apologies. Um, I hope you're all having a good time. Mike Bush from TechCrunch. And here I am with uh, Mikhail uh, from YouTube and Leonard from, uh, who's an advisor to Yandex on startups in Russia. Obviously, there's a lot going on in Russia. We're five minutes as away, as it were, very close to Russia. And um, it's an enor enormous market, and it's very interesting to see what's going on there right now. Um, it's kind of opening up. When I talk to Russians about the startup world, they generally uh, talk about um, you know, how, how things are happening, how fast things are happening. And um, uh, so we're going to sort of talk about that a little bit. Um, so guys, um, just, just generally speaking, let's, let's talk a little bit firstly about what you're, what you're working on. Uh, Leonid, do you want to just sort of tell everybody what you're actually working on right now? Well, uh, <clears throat> I have my small my own small seed fund kind of incubator in Yekaterinburg, which is uh, 2,000 kilometers to the east from Moscow. And I'm also advising Yandex on startups, so Russia is too big and <coughs> Yandex needs its ambassadors to develop the startup scene over all the country. And, um, and uh, uh, Mikhail, what about, uh, you were with you, Rutu, but you're, you're now doing other things. Uh, what are you working on right now? I, I'm ex-CEO of Rootube, for, and for, for now I try to monetize, monetize my visionary development, uh, my own, a couple of my own projects, and try to raise money for a couple of investors from Russia. So let's talk about some of, the, some of the hot topics right now. One of the big things that's going on right now is, is e-commerce, because a lot of the business models that played out in uh, in you know the US, for instance, in the last few years, effectively being replayed again in an emerging market like like Russia, like like Ozon, for instance. Um, I mean, and it's and Russia has actually now overtaken Germany as the biggest the biggest internet market in Europe. Russia is it, is it a licensed? Is is Russia now a license to print money? <clears throat> Russia is overtaking Germany by the number of internet users, but yeah. I don't think that it's even close to Germany or UK as a market for e-commerce. There are two main... In terms of revenue. Uh, yeah, in terms yeah. of revenue. There are two major problems. One is called Russian Post, which is slow, not reliable, and, well, Ozone, you mentioned, had to build its own infrastructure, of yeah. delivery of everything. The second problem is uh, there are some technical and uh, legal issues with the usage of credit cards, so electronic money and so on, which puts some obstacles to the development of e-commerce. So I would think that other <coughs> services from uh, the B2B, B2G, like you know, electronic tax declarations, uh, for instance, uh, are developing in Russia much faster than e-commerce. What about you? What do you think? I think uh, that the Russian is completely, uh, or rather different, has a rough, rather different uh, marketing client landscape. That's, uh, that's what you noticed, uh, and that's you, what, what you know before you enter Russia. What does it mean? The uh, main search engine is not Google, it's Yandex. The um, popular social networks is not uh, Facebook, it is Adnaklasnik, uh, Kontakti, and uh, other. So, uh, what, what does this mean for you? That you can, uh, in Russia, you can provide the same strategy, the same tools that uh, work for you in the other markets when uh, Facebook and Twitter are um, on top and the Googles. Why? Because uh, the, 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 the tools, the integrations, the APIs works different and you can just replace your service in Russia and hope that uh, you will win as a other market when the, which bases on the other uh, main marketing tools. If you uh, don't uh, transform your s uh, tools and your service and your strategy uh, that uh, it works with the uh, Russian main players, uh, search engines, social networks, and the, uh, and the few other things, it, was, uh, it will be a lottery for you and you can win or you can lose. You need to be ready to transform your service, your tools, working with the Russian uh, top uh, traffic sources, uh, search engines, and a couple of other things. Yandex has been uh, in the news recently for building its uh, a social browser 
for instance, trying to do a lot of the things that, like, for, kind of almost like doing a Google Plus in its own right. I mean, what's your view about that? Do you think that's um, a good move for Yandex? Yeah, uh, Yandex considers itself as a critical and main part of the Russian internet, internet infrastructure. Uh, Yandex, I, I don't think Yandex considers itself as a Russian Google. It considers itself as Yandex, so it has to uh, do everything which is related to search, internet browsing services. There will be a very interesting um, thing, like Yandex market for services, um, and some other very interesting uh, tools and services that I that are not directly competing with those of Google. Because, well, really, mm, uh, I, I'm, Yandex is not building, well, a social network. But if you want to get access to some information or to some service or to also mm, um, to whatever in Russia, Yandex wants you to do it through Yandex. It's a very it's a natural strategy. It's a portal play. It's yeah. a portal play. Uh, YouTube uh, yesterday was banned briefly in Russia. Uh, for a couple of hours. For 20 minutes. For about 20, well, 20 minutes. Was that a mistake? Uh, Do you think that was a mistake? Uh, pardon. Uh, the officials claim it's a mistake. What do you mean? Apparently, YouTube was blocked for you know half an hour or something yesterday <laughs> in, maybe in Russia. Was it a, was it, did somebody unplug maybe, it? <laughs> maybe it was a test. Uh, does it work or not? That does this uh, switch work? Uh, yeah, does it, it work uh, or, or not? It's just, switch. I, I, yeah. I think they didn't test <laughs> the switch. Of, uh, obviously, the switch works. They, they were testing the reaction of the, yeah, the reaction kind of, of the society. Do you, think, do you think it was a mistake, or do you think it was planned? Of course, it was a mistake. I think uh, it's, it's some kind of mistake. The officials claim it was a mistake. We maybe, have no reason not to trust. Them. Maybe, maybe related with the humor factor. <laughs> Who knows? Of course, yes. Interesting. Um, there, there is some uh, legis some new uh, law that. Uh, uh, that allowed uh, providers to block uh, any sources uh, that contains information that uh, are against the uh, Constitution or that contains uh, um, dangerous information. So maybe they test some tools to block the sources, may maybe, I don't know, but I, I think it might be uh, some something that's related with Someone this. Someone tripped over the cord. Yeah, because it's a new laws and uh, providers need to have these uh, <laughs> tools to, to, block, to block sources and they... What's, well, it's, well, a, it's a new thing for Russia. Do you, think that, um, do you think that the Russian internet economy is capable of continuing to expand at the rate it is um, unfettered by government intervention? Or do you feel that it is going to ultimately start to become a problem? I don't know. So, so far, uh, the startup economy and the e-commerce and all these services do develop with no regard to all these uh, weird government initiatives. Uh, still, those initiatives were not a factor really implying on the on business development and Russian online market was always uh, the most free and the most non-corrupt of Russian markets, definitely. But they could start uh, have influence also because, of course, uh, they mm, influence their mm, in investment climate. Yeah, because well, how how could you invest to some to development of some you know, web service in Russia if this service could just be blocked by a huge switch? I mean, if we talk about e-commerce uh, and maybe somebody interested in e-commerce in Russia, the impo most important thing that you uh, should know that Russia is too big and in uh, uh, e-commerce you have a big part that's related with the offline, with delivery, with the customer service and the other thing. There is no any good uh, third-party service that you can... Um, that you can offer to deliver your goods all over the country, even maybe in uh, one region that are far from Moscow. So you should remember about it. So that's the stopper to develop uh, e-commerce in Russia <coughs> also. I mean, um, I mean that's, that, that's sort of a continuing issue, isn't it? We've seen um, the, a lot of political protests in Russia over the last few months, um, close, you know, close to the elections, and we saw the the jailing of the uh, pussy riot um, women. Um, 
Do you think that, uh, that uh, internet freedoms will ultimately start to become encroached upon because people are realizing now the power of this uh, to get, uh, to get you know, information out there for democratic debate? I mean, you've been quite involved in that yourself, haven't you? Yeah, exactly. But, well, to be honest, uh, there is about, by my estimates, uh, three to four million uh, internet users in Russia that use internet as a primary source of so, political information, of news, and Only so on. Only three to four million? Yeah, and 60 million more that use internet for social networks, for, for buying stuff, and that still have so, uh, the official television as a main source of political information. So the official uh, uh, channels of, infra of propaganda are much more powerful than internet. internet uh, has shown its ability so, to mobilize people, to bring them so, out on the, on the streets in uh, winter and so, to organize some activity like so, elections to the coordination council of Russian opposition uh, in October. But still it covered several hundred thousand of politically active people. So it's, I, I don't think it's yet so a risk factor for the, for the Russian authorities, which is good for e-commerce because <laughs> they, they wouldn't so, so try to stop all the internet activities, so ultimately. Um, what about in terms of uh, the op op opportunity for uh, uh, companies outside Russia to launch inside Russia and to, you know, to get market share? Uh, Google famously has tried to go up against Yandex. Um, other Western companies have tried to kind of break Russia, as it were, to get into Russia. What's, uh, What's your view about the opportunity for companies, and for instance, from startups, for instance, that want to reach the Russian market? How do you, what's the best way of going at, about that? Uh, no, as, I, as I told, uh, you need uh, to know that the marketing landscape is different and the main traffic sources is different and they use different API, they, use the, uh, they contain different options uh, that are really different <laughs> than, uh, for example, Contact and Facebook. It's a different, uh, they have different tools for you to drive your traffic. It's first of all, uh, and you know, and, and you must know, and you need to transform your service also, not only in marketing, but maybe inside, uh, inside your core, maybe inside your some some your service. It's first of all, you need to ready to work. I just talk to one more point, and then I give you a world. Uh, and then you, uh, then you will be ready to work with Russian language. It, it is a hard uh, language to work with them. You, there is no so many. Um, so many tools to use it as a third party to that which you help to translate, to uh, dedicate uh, language, to aggregate language. Uh, if your service is uh, deeply related with the, uh, with the language, <coughs> you need to be prepared that Russian is not an uh, um, English-speaking nation at all. That's why my English is not so good too. <laughs> yeah, I completely agree with uh, both your points and I would add that well, uh, Russia is, mm, so, uh, Sergei Belosov, the, the senior partner of Runa Capital, yesterday uh, uh, say, uh, talked on this stage that Russia is not so good as a market because of its distances and uh, all these uh, points, but very good as a, a source of technical talent. Um, you might know there is a thing called uh, ACM ICPC, uh, International Collegiate Programming Contest, and over the last 12 years, so in the 21st century, only three countries, uh, teams from only three countries were winning the gold medals. It was Russia, China, and Poland. And, well, Russia, and uh, for instance, the uh, uh, main developer of Contact is a twice gold medalist of SM, SCPC. So, re Russia is really rich in technical talent, which, uh, which contributes to a very strong competition from inside Russia, yeah, because, well, Yandex is a brilliant technological power, and that's why it's holding its position and winning against Google. And that uh, makes it extremely complicated for international player to uh, come to invade Russian market, in addition to that point that uh, Michael already mentioned. So you can copy paste. Uh, it doesn't work in the most of uh, on the most of point. Maybe you need to find some solution in Russia. Maybe with some third party, with agency, with some consultancy, with some guys who are working in Russia who know 
landscape, you know, where you can get traffic for your service, where you can uh, get a content, Russian content, all related with the Russian mentality content, that uh, to fill your service, or goods maybe, not only content, to fill your service, to, uh, to, to launch faster. Uh, I think you find uh, you, you need to find some uh, partners in Russia if you want to launch your service there. It will be better. It will be maybe easier or faster. <coughs> maybe not so. Uh, maybe the, your profit will be less. But uh, but it's it's it better than lose everything in, in this market. What's the um, in your view? What's the single biggest thing that's going to really ignite uh, more startups coming out of Russia? international startups, for instance. Is it capital? Is Obviously, there's lots of talent there. Uh, is it going to be capital? Is it going to be more interaction with, uh, you know, uh, Western, um, Western startups? Do you think it's, what's, what's, what's really going to, you know, set things alight? From my personal viewpoint, uh, what, what Russian startups should concentrate on is, of course, uh, China, India, Indonesia, so South <laughs> Uh, Eastern Asia markets. They are closer to Russia than to uh, US and Europe, and uh, they are very similar. So, I mean, Indonesia is very similar to Russia with its distances and uh, with all the uh, problems of the local market, with its population and so on. So, and these markets are relatively free, relatively close to us. I, I don't think that uh, most of Russian startups except for some best technological examples like Kaspersky or Parallels, are really ready for a competition in the global market, but I definitely think they could do well in the competition in the Eastern market. Ah, interesting. Is that your view as well? Yeah, it's, uh, it's close. What I always uh, advise to startups to notice that Russia is not a separate or isolated area uh, from the all over the world online activity yet. It, 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 it was five or seven years before maybe, but for now it's a part of this global activity and if you launch any, any product and you want a really global expansion, uh, you must uh, know that your product might be comp need to compete on the quality, on the other, on, on the other scenes with the global uh, competitors, not only for local. That's, that's, that's the most important for now, because nobody uh, want, uh, very many investors want to invest in the global, uh, global startups, or with global potential, but uh, not, not local. Um, and I know them, and they really want to, to be on a global. That's why if you launch something, uh, be sure that you need to compete with, the, with the, your global uh, competitors, not only with local. Yeah, by the way, the recent move of uh, launch of Yandex in Turkey, I think it's a good example, which was quite successful. I think it's a good example of yeah. what, I, what I told. Expanding east oh. from Russia. Yeah. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you.